so you guys know that this is um, cooking from the garden and the garden this morning was the farmers market and also I brought quite a few things from my home in the Nine Mile from that garden and so the, the market was awesome. There were little tomatoes, little potatoes, fresh garlic, just all kinds of, of great things. Nice little peas. Um, we got some gadzook zucchini from Blue Willow Farms in Stevensville. So when what I have when it's hot and I don't want to do a lot of fuss with cooking, um, I always think of what Southern French cooking is all about in the summer, and I think of the salade nassoise type um, dish where on a nice platter is arranged some tuna usually and then a combination of potatoes, green beans, tomatoes, olives um, traditionally but I, I don't really stick to that format and that's the most important thing about cooking from the garden is not to have a preconceived notion of what you're going to do but say I don't have beans we don't have beans and they're traditional to that but we have peas and and we have zucchini and we have onions and tomatoes and carrots. So we can use any of those things with that same lovely mustard herb vinaigrette and make a nice meal with some bread. Um, if you want to add anything to grilled tuna, grilled chicken, sausage, anything you want to round that out, that's, that's the perfect thing to use. So don't think we just have to do it one way. And since you're coming right out of the garden and you're gonna be in a hurry, you wanna be able to make a um, simple dressing that doesn't require a lot of thought. And we have a, a fresh garlic. So he's gonna. And they're a little bit more difficult sometimes to deal with um, than the ones that are hard. <clears throat> the hard ones you can just really give them a good whack and the papery skin splinters off but the fresh ones are very soft as you can see the skin is just almost um, <laughs> you know just very soft and subtle you guys can come up and feel that if you want and see if you haven't worked with new garlic and it's almost a little bit resistant and we're going to use a lot of garlic because that is the way it, the way it works there. So then you can smash this really nice and flat. So we're going to put it, just put it right in the bowl. And then touch the skin. Oh yeah, that right. Yeah, just, yeah, you guys can I've never get closer and, and just kind yeah. of get really interactive here maybe. And that looks like about, you want to be a little bit generous with salt and these traditional vinaigrettes and then you can just take your fork. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. And just mash your salt. garlic in there with the salt. And the salt gives a little bit of abrasive, abrasive quality to it. So it, and then you don't have the garlic pressed to clean. Anything else? Okay. Let me do this. White vinegar? Mm -hmm. so this is white vinegar and this is just a lovely little bottle. 
<laughs> yeah, that, I was like, that looks expensive. That looks I amazing. Keep, and I think Is it white wine? I think it probably yes. Oh, white wine. Okay. I think it probably was sort of expensive as, as was this present I received. But um, once you have done with those, then you can refill them with mm -hmm. um, something a little bit less. And so I keep these on my kitchen counter. I don't have these at the restaurant. That's all the well. Left hand for a right hand twist. That works a little bit. Yeah. I've heard not to use acid in a 
not in a, a stainless steel bowl. It's not. I think in an aluminum bowl, you would get some, you might get some different coloration and some bleaching. Um, but a stainless steel bowl is, that's what you think about. Alright, so we have our little peas here, and we're going to steam those as well. So we could worry about, you know, taking that little some off. What do you guys think? You think that's worth it? No, yeah. no I don't, I don't think so. Concerned about it, so. I don't think so either. So let's put some of these in, in this other little steamer. Alright. Once again, it's all about the burners. So the other trick to a good spontaneous salad, um, like this where th some things are fresh and some things are cooked, is that everything should be cooked individually and just for as long as it needs to be cooked. Um, and instead of throwing everything all together, that way you have a much better result. So if you steam your little beans, if you have those, steam them for a short period of time. The peas, we'll just put them in there basically until, you know, they come up to a good boil. And those that will just take a little bit of that outside waxiness off of those peas. And here we have some little peas which came in, and I think that we should just eat these raw. I really think they are just beautiful. What do you guys think? You think they should just eat them raw? Yeah, they, they look were. really tender. Yeah, yeah. I don't know they're beautiful. Raw. I like they're all better. Much and then it hits the heat and you end up with, with 
just a little bit.
100. Tom over there helped me. Um, probably about 10 minutes. Put those in for about 10 minutes. And just and did you put them with oil on both sides, or did you? I just just can? sort of threw them right in there, and then we'll pick them up and toss them a little bit. So I'm gonna check these little guys. So I need a board. charred with a little bit of um, garlic that's lightly browned in oil and a little red pepper flakes. So trim him off and make sure he's starting to grow this tough skin, but it's still really soft and leathery. So we want to make sure that we get that off of there. And I didn't smash this one because we want really nice thin little little tiny slices mm -hmm. and this is a really really big full of garlic so I think I'll just one give them one more Here. 
guy is a little slower. Isn't he? So you're wanting your um, garlic to just begin to get golden. It gets too brown. It will be bitter. A little bit of a little bit of red chili flakes in there. A little zest to the whole thing. You guys all see okay back there? is getting a little bit beyond our control. So they're starting to get golden. You can see that nice color right there. So you just want to hit it with the slightly wet charge. them over there that have those little, some sort of a little device that's supposed to help it hold up. You know, and instead it just keeps, oh, it will keep passing on itself. You need to keep it closed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. those little, you know what I'm saying? They have a couple of them over on the wall. Don't buy those. You'll be so frustrated. <laughs> that's a salt. That's a salt. That's a salt. Um, yeah, so if these irritate you in your drawer, all you have to do is save one of those rubber bands that we get on broccoli and harness them up. basting brush. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so that is the only thing that I personally have and it doesn't work at all. I all can right. tell you right now, the silicone barbecue basting brush is not not a good thing. Cool. Um, and we do have at the restaurant some silicone baking cups mm -hmm. that actually do work pretty well. Let's see how this is. Is it cold? Yeah. Nice. So now that chilled things down really, I'm putting the chart in there. Chilled that down really a lot. So we still do have it on full tilt. You want most of the moisture to evaporate off of your greens. I mean, this is actually a mixture of um, chard and kale. But you could use spinach, you could use all chard. Once again, whatever you find in your garden, you could use some arugula. Um, collard greens. Yeah. Collard greens, um, especially when they're young. Yeah, especially when they're young. If you use all kale, would you want to kind of to get it and thing it for a little bit longer. Yes, I think if you use, um, I didn't use all the kale that you mm -hmm. gave
Around the corner. Um, yes, actually I'll, when we go back around the corner, we can. Look at that. I get another bowl out of that. It seems like I'm... do here is wash the pan out um, and then oil it up before we go on with the frittata in the end. If I were doing this at home, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be doing so much of the like um, four of you or two of you or even probably six of you. Um, you could get that all done in some oil really fast and then just add your eggs, but we wouldn't want to do that here because we would end up with a, a bit of a mess with that. So. So then here we have some chard that I have steamed already. That is this lovely part here. And I'm glad that you asked that question because um, in a restaurant situation or a lot of situations where you need to saute really fast, the greens come off of these beautiful bright light um, chard stems and then what do you do with the stems? Because for a quick saute, these don't cook as fast. And so, but they're so beautiful. I mean, you know, you want to use them. There's lots of things you could actually do with them. But the easiest thing is to just steam some ahead, like I did. And they don't necessarily turn out as pretty a color when they are steamed, but they're tender. So we will. Um, We will put some of those in with our chart. And now let's check the potatoes, which hopefully are done. Oh yes, they're just perfect. that in with the potatoes while they're still warm. What did you say that was? Fresh oregano. Yeah. I mean, you can come up and pet the herbs. That's always a, a good thing to get familiar with those. My German grandmother made the same. She did a, not the exact same, but mm -hmm. same with the vinegar and potatoes. Yeah. Vinegar potatoes, and then mm -hmm. did she add like a bacon vinaigrette? Um, no, I think a light mayonnaise after yeah, that. Yeah, with chives. 
Well, I remember one time going, where's the mayonnaise on the potato salad? And mom's like, you know, yeah, different kind. <laughs> you don't always need it. That's such a nice, like the oregano is, oh. Oh, it's so aromatic. Yeah. It? Oh, Let's put some chives in there too. Well, Oh, so since we're going, 
um, some, yeah, just the basil vinaigrette that we made in there. So now we're going to finish the frittata. So since we're going for a, a sort of a Greek feta, spanakopita char, um, we're going to use, of course, fresh dill. And some of this came from the mud garden. Some came from my garden. that off. I love dill. The other fun thing about dill is you only have to plant it once and then if you carefully don't plant, you'll never have to plant it again. It will volunteer up all around your garden and you'll have dill forever and ever. Where, where it's about to flower, I think that's when it's most delicious. It's just really pungent, pungent and dill-like. I think you all can actually even smell. And once again, like when you're doing herbs, the easiest thing to do to contain them is wrap them in a tightest little bundle as you can get. And then just start gently chopping with your fingers. Collecting them all up and then go back through a few more times.
So it's just eggs in there? Or you just eggs. Yeah. So I put, you know, the um, yolks were so thick that I put maybe a tablespoon of water just oh. to kind of. Sure, we want to coat, make sure our pan is coated. How hot is this one? With the oil. I'm going to start it off um, on high again to get the oil machine across the pan and then I'll turn it down. And then we're going to finish it um, in the oven. with your temperatures yeah, and, and make sure that your pan gets nice and hot so that but not too hot so when your eggs you know, form that that seal okay so we're going to start with our chart again up really nice there. So now 
now we'll just have to kind of be patient. The um, trick with this will be to get it cooked, but not such a large amount of eggs, but not burn it with our electric stove. You're definitely not mixing it. No. You're just kind no. of just letting the heat I'm in letting the letting uncooked it. parts of the egg flow underneath. Great. As I pull back the what temperature are you on now? I'm still on high. Still on Still on nice high. Pasta. I'm slightly nervous about it. <laughs> Doesn't it go in the oven anyway? It will go in the oven. Yes, it will. Yes. But I find if you put it in the oven just straight away without doing a little bit of this, uh -huh. the edges get, especially with a large one like this, that the edges get way set before the middle gets done and so so I try and get as much of the uncooked egg dealt with to a point you know as possible for me bring them in the edge there. about what's underneath there, so we are going to go in the oven. Sprinkle some feta. Just mush that in there. It's a good scientific term, sure, mush. And then we'll put it in the oven. basically olives and our 
base dressing that I made a little bit of a head. What kind of tuna is it? This is um, just the normal tuna from the, the store. Yeah. yeah, yes, the. And capers. And capers. Gotta have some capers. And. So it's the vinaigrette, olives, and capers? It doesn't. Um, one more time. That's what did you say? It's the vinaigrette that you made? Yes, it's some of the vinaigrette, but then there's some capers and olives. Okay. But I made a little of the base. Yeah, I'm going to go to head. So then we will just take our dressing here and we'll just drizzle it. A little extra on the potatoes. Maybe not on the olives so much in the. Yeah, I don't like it. Whoops, olives under the. Um, because they're so pretty to look at. So we'll just finish off that. And then surely there are some flowers in your garden. Thank <laughs> you. 
summer, so commercial break. It's um, right. after you sharpen your knife, you have the a stone. And it has um, it has the perfect angle because a lot of people, myself included, have a hard time with that. Getting the perfect angle all the time, and I think that a lot of these just go whack, 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 whack on a steel. They're really not doing much, but this gives you really, really sharp. But yeah, it's a curious looking little bit, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, what other types of edible flowers are there? Oh my goodness, there's so many. Actually, probably more are edible than not. You can use calendulas, um, marigolds, bachelor buttons, forage flowers, um, Johnny Jumbles. Yes, rose petals are edible. Um, and of course, Lavender. I think lavender is delicious. Some people, some people don't like it. They think it makes their food taste like soap. But I've really successfully steeped just a few little lavender blossoms in milk and sugar and made um, lavender ice cream. Oh. <clears throat> so you strain the flowers out and it's just delicious. We yeah. had lavender lemonade one time. Lavender oh. lemonade. Oh. Lavender lemonade. Um, lavender is really good. I have a, a lamb sauce at the restaurant that has just a little bit of lavender steeped in with rosemary and savory and thyme and then strained out. Do you just use the flower part of it or do you? Just the flower part of it. Yeah, the stems are really strong. Okay. What about herb flowers? Pardon? Herb flowers. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. These, you know, like thyme flowers, um, you can just sprinkle those over pasta. Um, you know, that's that, yeah, that absolutely. Basil doesn't really have any flowers to speak of, so that you would want to use. But, and with this dish here, if you didn't have potatoes and you had pasta, you can do the very same technique with pasta.
probably would have been advisable to, to do it in two pans, you know, do it in two pans this size instead of one. I mean, that would have probably been the, the, um, the smarter thing to do if I had a house full of relatives like I had last weekend. I would. Do they expect you to cook for them when they're you know, they did. <laughs> it was just... That's no vacation. That's when they went. It's not your job. But when Amazing it's your job. about that. <laughs> there we go. So we'll just let that melt. If there were a broiler, I would, uh, you know, in the stove, I would zoom it right under the broiler. But commercial stoves, for some reason, well, actually, I know what it's they don't, they, they don't have broilers. Like, well, that's because they have separate. these great, huge, massive sal matters of shoot flame that are about face high and oh, stick you things in. Under there. Yeah, so they don't bother putting them in the stoves. I guess they think it would be redundant. And then it has to rise, 
and then it has to come out, and then it has to be baked. You know, it's just it's, uh, And then we do a French as well, which was still in the oven, so except for the bread that went to the market. So We have your, your cute little gingham one. We do? You could get that. This is the nicest meal I've ever been a part of. So. I don't want to go all out. It's <laughs> true. You don't really sell your bread other than it's used for. We sell it at the, we're selling at the farmer's market this yeah. year. Yeah. Along with the grandmothers. We do grandmother cannoli. I saw the cannoli this morning. Yeah. And it's called what? We do grandmother? We can. We think grandmother. Yeah, grandmother as, as in the cannoli and the pasta was so delicious it made her right. <laughs> <laughs> own. Grandmother we yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, yes, he did. But that was because one day he made some little tiny thin spinach pasta for a special, and I said, Mr. Walker, that would make an Italian grandmother wheat. And his fertile mind you know, <laughs> took off, and, and so that was weeping grandmother pasta. Well, I think the silver is just well, thank you. And the plates are behind where we are getting those endless apartments. So just help yourselves. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really, it's really hard to get to. You know, I, what I, I would like to do is, you know, like trying to do it the right way is harder. Yeah. Yeah, anybody you know? ask any questions no, I know. about anything? I'm ready. <laughs> so, so what is this part you're preparing right now? I she was just asking a question about time. Oh, okay. See, the, the more flowers it gets, the less leaves it has in her. So it gets harder. I get sparser right now. Yeah. Um, before that, it was no doubt better. But you just, just basically go like this. I was saying that my stones were breaking about as evenly as the leaves of the same course. Yeah, we all have, you know, you just kind of have to. Um, we suffer from this. And when they get, especially after you cut them, then um, they grow back thinner and weaker than they do. But that's really the only way to do it. It's just one of the stem comes up. Oh, you see that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So and there are other ones that are Yes. Yeah, really hot that has to do a lot of It's like um, the little radishes. Actually, it's surprisingly more related. I guess. And these like red looks like an we should get a spoon over here to, to help. Oh, yeah. You need a spoon. Are there big serving spoons over there? Yeah, they're not Just like two or three, maybe, for all the different. Oh, I'm not very good at this. Yeah, it's just like this. All right. Uh, and that's right. Thank you. Here we are. Thanks. Might wipe it off. Yeah. Okay. I'll put these peppers here. Not at all pretty, but we definitely should eat those peppers. Can you cover that? Sure. What you did with the fresh garlic? Oh, I am. The whole deal here was just whacking holes. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. So 
just use it as, as I think I'm here. Absolutely. And it's actually less tricky to deal with than the older girl because you don't ever have to take out the, that green germ that you should always take out. But it just has this leathery. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> That meat is so tender, you know. It is. A, I love working with fresh garlic. And then you could, you know, if you wanted to just chop it on a cutting board, you yeah. just sprinkle a little bit of salt on it. Okay. To lubricate it. To lubricate it. Not lubricate it. To make it um, more grainy. And then, you know, scrape it into a little bit of